subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. One plus six for over two months now. And in this video, I wanna share with you my experience using this device. Let's begin by talking about the design and how it's held up. And overall, it's been kind of mixed for me. Here's why. Uh, after getting the LG G7 ThinQ, this phone has actually felt rather wide in the hand. So this is definitely a wider phone. And because it's a really tall display with that notch extending display even further, I think if you have small hands, the reach is rather long on this phone. Also, there's no way I found to use the fingerprint to swipe down notifications, which doesn't help at all. That feature was on prior OnePlus devices. And with this design, you do have a camera bump. So you do need a case to cover this thing or that camera is vulnerable. It's slippery just like all other glass phones, but the great things about it are that it supports a very nice premium feel for that price point, very large display because of the notch. And you also do have really thin sides that feel very nice and a mute switch, is, which is great uh, on all the OnePlus devices. So it's been, you know, so-so. I really think it feels premium for the price, but I think there's phones that do have slightly better designs than the OnePlus 6, but really what's really touching the OnePlus and its price point, not many phones, if any. Over two months talking about the body and the build of this phone, 177 grams, so, it's a little, it's about the, you know, iPhone 10 weight, to be honest, but because it's a, it's a little bit more balanced across the body, it doesn't feel like as heavy as an iPhone 10. This phone also does have splash resistance, no IP rating for the OnePlus 6, and it hasn't really scratched at all. So that's a good thing. You do have a nice Gorilla Glass 5 on this phone. So it's a DC IP3 display as well. So overall, the body and the build of this phone, I think has been pretty fantastic over the past couple of months. Not much to complain about there. Again, I just think because the camera bump, it's a little bit vulnerable. And I did get a little scratch up in the corner, a little scuff, but that was my own fault. So I'm not gonna fault it there for none of those reasons said. 102 PPI is where this phone, I don't really dig it too much because I really do like those higher res screens that get up in the 500 pixels per inch. I know a lot of people say that doesn't matter, but when I put this next to a Pixel 2 XL, I put this next to an LG G7 ThinQ, I put this next to a Galaxy S9 Plus, I can see that higher resolution easily on that text. So OnePlus 6 has a great calibrated display, AMOLED, beautiful colors for video, but anybody who puts this next to a higher res 2K or, or higher display on some of these phones lately, you're gonna see the difference. But again, this is going for value, so you gotta cut corners somewhere and putting a 1080p panel definitely saves them a few bucks on that. But you can tweak it and I think it has great viewing angles and uh, extraordinary colors. So very popping colors and no matter which angle you look at this thing, you're not gonna have an issue. So. I think it's a really good display. It just doesn't make my list as the best displays because of its resolution. Over two months software, this has been fantastic for the OnePlus 6 in that it just gets updates all the time. So that really makes you feel like OnePlus cares about the community of OnePlus users. I get updates all the time on this phone and that's something you can't say about a lot of Android phones. This is actually on par, if not more updates than I've seen on the Google Pixel 2 XL. Now don't get me wrong, you definitely need those updates, but further discussing software, very clean user interface. There's a few OnePlus add-ons such as the gestures and, and the ability to hide things like the little dock down here and uh, get rid of that. There's just a little few add-ons that are actually quite useful for the OnePlus 6. And other than that, a few button changes you can do. The OnePlus 6 is a clean stock kind of feeling software on Oxygen. OS. It actually reminds me more of an old rooted OS known as Cyanogen Mod. That's the closest thing I feel like a OnePlus software comes to. And that brings me on to performance. This is actually the fastest phone that I currently use. The eight gigabytes of RAM in here with the Snapdragon 845 coupled with Oxygen OS and constant software updates. This thing is faster than pretty much any other phone on the market. So what can I say about battery after two months with the OnePlus 6? It's been definitely very good in terms of getting me through a full single day. I haven't found this phone to get me through more than maybe a day and a quarter. It's not going a day and a half. 
This one needs to be charged up every night, but with a 3300 milliamp hour battery and the efficiency of a Snapdragon 845, if you are a light user, you might go two days, but I'm a pretty heavy user, so I'm not getting through more than one day. But dash charging is so fast that it doesn't really matter on the OnePlus 6 because you can go take a shower, come back, and your phone is almost fully charged for this device. So battery life has been acceptable. I haven't been disappointed with it at all for the OnePlus 6. Now I'm gonna discuss camera a little bit, but I did some comparisons with this phone and you can check out those links down below. Clean software for the camera. In my past two months, I've really enjoyed how simple it is to shoot with this device. And you do have some nice modes like Google Lens, Panorama, Pro mode, time lapse, portrait, and slow motion. The ability to just put the timer on is so simple. I wish all phones would put the timer right up there in the settings, right from the viewfinder. You can go 19 by nine, one by one, four by three. Those are basically the aspects you're gonna need for a phone. Over here, HDR, and overall, just I really love the software, as you can tell, with the OnePlus 6. It's just super easy to use, and has a pretty high rating on DxO mark for its camera. I know not everybody takes that too seriously, but the OnePlus 6 is a very good performer in real life. Take a look at these samples and decide for yourself if this is something you're still going to consider. Moving on to audio, I didn't really like the audio for this phone. It has a decently loud speaker, but it gets covered up easy, and this is one of its biggest pitfalls. If you're into external audio, you're gonna wanna get a Bluetooth speaker to pair with this guy, but inclusion of a headphone jack definitely helps out, and Bluetooth was very fast on this phone, so connections, no issues on that front. Very good audio experience through Bluetooth and the headphone jack, but on the external, it's not that great. So just keep that in mind. That's my experience so far with the OnePlus 6 over two months. Lastly, discussing phone calls. The OnePlus claims that they have fixed the phone call issue in a recent update. Hasn't really changed much for me. The phone calling experience on here has been good, just not fantastic. Sometimes people said they couldn't hear me, and for 2018, we got to do better than this in phone call quality. So if you're watching this OnePlus, I think you need to do a little bit better when it comes to phone call quality. That's not to say all the OnePlus has had this issue, but for some reason, I just haven't had been having a great phone calling experience when it comes to people hearing me. Sometimes they say they couldn't hear me on the other end and it's for some odd reason, even though I have full bars. So we have arrived at the final conclusion of this video. OnePlus 6, two months later, I only made this video because there's so much phones that are being released and coming out very shortly. And this one is still a very compelling option on the market in the OnePlus 6, but I actually wouldn't buy this phone at this current price point. I have it now because I've had it since launch day, but right now you're only a couple months or so away from the Pixel 3. The new iPhones are coming out. Those are probably not on your list if you're looking in the price point of this, but the LCD budget model might be more competitive with the OnePlus 6 and the OnePlus 6T is probably gonna drop in a few months. So buying this right now, it's kind of a hard place. I think the best time to buy a OnePlus is when they first release. But if you got your eyes set on the OnePlus 6, it's a pretty stellar performer in most areas and everything that I said I didn't like about it, it's just nitpicking little things. This phone offers a fantastic value at a fantastic price point. It's basically just as good as a phone you're gonna pay twice as much for. If you guys wanna see more content related to this device, I have shot quite a few videos. I'll link them down below, some speed tests, some camera comparisons, and I think I did a camera review 
on this one as well. Any more video suggestions, feedback, questions, let me know. I do use these phones in the real world, so I can help you out with that. And if I can't get back to you, people in the community using these devices will answer your comments. So don't feel afraid to ask a question. If you find this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoyable, do me a favor, click that like button for me. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here.